Um, all right, so Harold, this is an alteration addition to an existing residence in Middle Park, the coastal site. So our, um, this project started off as a, cha a, a planning challenge. Our clients had lived in the house behind that tree for about 20 years uh, before we were approached. The, the house was originally a, a 30s uh, deco single story building, uh, similar to the one on the left, the white building. Um, but the clients had done quite a major uh, alteration to it in 2001. Uh, and their kids had grown up there and, uh, and the house was starting to, uh, hadn't been particularly well built at the time uh, and it was starting to, uh, to run down and uh, not function for them. One of the pluses of this house though was uh, they'd created a large first floor terrace um, that was accessed from the um, bedroom, quite oddly, uh, and also gave access to a swimming pool that they built uh, at the first floor level. But the actual trigger of the project was the construction of this three-storey house um, to the south of us, um, which basically obliterated their bay views. So the challenge that was put to us by the client was to, um, to see if we can get a third storey onto their building, um, which would then possibly give them views to, uh, in, to the north, to the city. So the, we looked at sort of various strategies and then sort of the, the building was in not a particularly well planned building or a particularly well built building. So the decision was made to strip it back to the core elements that were, um, were salvageable in the water of quality. And it turned out to be um, just the swimming pool, the, uh, the remnants of the existing 30s house and the ground floor slab. So the picture on the left is the, uh, the house it was, as it was before we started. And the picture on the right was um, where we got to at the end of demolition. So the, the, the genesis of the, of the planning was that we kind of looked at the site and um, whilst the building wasn't particularly good, the, uh, the footprint um, worked pretty well on the site in terms of orientation and the rest of it. So just to quickly run through the plans, the, um, the, the three levels uh, each had their own kind of programmatic um, rationale. The ground floor uh, is really given is the domain of uh, adult children, the two university aged children. Uh, and this is their area, they have their private courtyard. Uh, and there's uh, the original living area uh, at the front there. Um, there's a garage at the back and storage at this level. The common area is the first floor. Uh, and it's a large open plan space, or actually not that large, um, kitchen, uh, living dining that sort of spills out onto a north facing terrace and um, views out to the pool uh, beyond. There's a guest bedroom at this level and a bathroom that services, um, services this level. The, um, the top floor is the parents' uh, bedroom uh, and it's really one large space divided by um, joinery elements. So um, bathroom, robe are all in a contiguous space. Um, the form actually started to derive from quite pragmatic um, reasons. Um, when we sort of did the first mud mapping of the first, the, um, the first floor level, um, we looked at um, protection, uh, you know, sun protection, um, screening the, the glazing, uh, and it set out a kind of eaves line. And then we um, sort of looked at overlooking issues uh, and how we could possibly screen those without the use of screens at the, at the first instance. And that sort of gave us some other lines. Uh, and then from there, it turned into a sort of sculptural exercise. Um, the, um, we introduced a, a, a sort of prow, which was a lift shaft, which, and there were kind of two reasons for that. One was to sort of uh, bring the building as far forward as we could but without introducing a lot of mass. Um, and also just to sort of pin the thing off visually. Um, it, to the south, it, it's abutted by a, a dead end laneway. Uh, and uh, we introduced a, a sort of remnant echo of the two story building in the form of some um, brickwork uh, made of the original stock brick recycled from the, um, from the building. Um, and even though it's not particularly accessible, we thought it sort of important that uh, even this sort of like dead facade 
uh, you know, sort of gave something, some little interest and glimpses back to the um, back to the public, and um, you know, um, uh, recall the um, the form of building form slightly, as sort of just a sort of echo, as I said. Um, a quick run through of the interiors from the top. Um, this is the open plan uh, bedroom area at the top with that spotted gum joinery divider element, which acts as a bed head on this side. Uh, the open plan bathroom with a small desk with a sort of triangle of, uh, uh, window, which gives views to the distance and a circular skylight uh, over a circular bathtub, the sky views as you uh, luxuriate in your hot tub. Um, it also sort of that skylight throws some really beautiful light patterns through the day with these sort of circular forms moving across the, um, the stonework. The, um, the rear of that unit is the walk-in robe, uh, once again lit from above, uh, where we would expose the raft just to once again pick up on that sort of patterning that the, the light would make during the day. Um, descending uh, from that level, you enter quite a sculpted um, staircase, um, which we've once again lit um, as we've done with we tried to do with most of the rooms in the project. Uh, where we could, we introduced natural light. Uh, the bathroom uh, at the level below where we echo once again that um, circular skylight from above and a secret shower that appears for guests. Um, the kitchen was deliberately done as quite a neutral and, uh, and minimal, visually minimal element uh, as a backdrop for the living spaces, which aren't particularly large. Um, and so we just we wanted to make that sort of element quite recessive, despite the fact that there's that crazy marble uh, island bench. Um, the spotted gum here again reappears uh, as uh, a joinery element, uh, in this case, a fireplace. Um, residual spaces are uh, sort of exploited to create small functions. Um, here there's a little bar inserted just behind that joinery unit on the staircase. One minute remaining. Yeah, the living room opens out to, spills out to the courtyard, oh, sorry, to the external terraces and the pool, a small terrace, residual terrace out to the uh, thing and then down the levels below uh, the entry. Uh, once again, spotted gum echoing through, a small study uh, inserted into the original entry and a reading nook uh, snuck in below the uh, cantilever of the existing pool. Um, I'll flick through these. The, uh, the cladding is an uh, aluminium, uh, sheet, uh, sorry, a uh, solid aluminium, three mil thick uh, anodized plate, um, which is produced in three tones of the same color. Um, screening above is uh, handled via these uh, mechanized uh, louvers, which allow us to open out the, um, the upper level uh, to the views beyond. Uh, and then the consideration of the facade also at night uh, as a kind of a lantern in the street. 